Hey everyone, Kevin here. Today we are going to look at Outlook rules. And yes, I know Outlook is amazing, but we're actually going to look at how you can set up rules in Outlook. So what is a rule? It's a way that you can filter your emails automatically. So what are some examples of that? Well, maybe your manager sends you an email and that's probably pretty important. You can separate that from your inbox into its own separate folder. Or maybe you get an email about an important cookie conference coming up. You can automatically flag that message for follow-up. Or as another example, maybe you get the Kevin Cookie Company newsletter. And to be honest, the content's not really that valuable. You could set it up to delete that automatically. If you spend any time manually organizing or sorting emails in Outlook, rules can help you save time. All right, let's jump into Outlook and let's create some rules. Here I am in my Outlook inbox here at the Kevin Cookie Company and I'm looking forward to setting up some rules so I can gain control over my inbox. It's just overflowing with messages here. We're gonna start off with how you can set up a very basic rule in Outlook. And right here, I received a message from Patty Fernandez. She's my manager here at the Kevin Cookie Company, and I wanna take all messages from Patty and I wanna put them into its own separate folder over here. And this way I can stay on top of all of the messages that I receive from Patty. To set up a rule in Outlook, there are two different ways you can get to it. Right here, I have the message from Patty selected. I can right click on that and this opens up a context menu. Within the context menu, about halfway down, there's the option for rules. And here I could set up a very basic rule. Now, alternatively, I can also select the message here and right up on the top ribbon within the home tab, about midway through under the move category, there's also an option here to set up a rule. Let's click on this. Within this menu, at the very top, I can set up a very basic rule. Here it says, always move messages from Patty Fernandez, and then I could decide what happens with that message. In a little bit, we'll come back and we'll look at how you can create a rule entirely from scratch. But for now, let's click on this option right up here. This is also one of the most common rules that people set up. This opens up a dialogue with rules and alerts. When I receive a message from Patty, I could decide where I wanna put it. Now I could choose any folder over here that I've created. Now I already have a folder called My Manager Patty, and I wanna move messages into there. If you don't yet have a folder where you wanna move messages to, over on the right hand side, you can click on new and you can create a new folder. Since I already have one, I'll select that and then click on okay. And just like that, it's now applied the rule and you'll see that the message from Patty disappeared from my inbox. Here now, if I go over onto the left hand side, I can click into my folder for my manager Patty and here I could see the message that she sent me. So this is one way that I can start organizing my inbox. Back now within my inbox, I wanna continue organizing things. And let's also create a rule that's a little bit more advanced. Here I have a message from one of my coworkers, Diego, and every day we grab lunch together. And so we have a daily email where we just try to figure out what type of lunch we want to get. Now, I wanna make sure that I don't miss this message. It's a very important email message. So I wanna make sure that I'm alerted to it but I don't wanna be alerted about all messages from Diego. For instance, here's another email from Diego about a customer who fell in the chocolate river at the Kevin Cookie Company. We need to figure out a PR response, but I can get to that later. Here, I wanna look at this lunch email. To create a rule, this time let's right click on it and let's go down to rules in the context menu. And this time, instead of selecting one of these pre-created options, let's go down to create rule. This opens up a prompt where I can start creating my rule. And compared to the previous approach, we have a few more options here. Now, typically when I get these lunch emails, it'll come from either Diego or Nestor. Any one of us could kick off one of these messages. So I don't wanna just select from Diego. Instead, I can look for the subject. So let's say maybe the subject contains lunch. I'll get rid of the question mark. Sometimes we include an exclamation mark or other characters, but the subject usually always contains lunch. And right down here, I mentioned I don't wanna miss this message. 
So here I can display a new item alert window, and in a moment I'll show you what this looks like. I also want to play a sound, just so I don't miss the message. Here I'll select this, and you could even browse and select whatever sounds you want. I've selected the Sour Tennessee Red. That'll definitely get me in the mood for lunch, so I'll go with that. Also right down here, I can choose to move the item to a folder, and I don't want to move it to my manager patty, I'll click on select folder. Over here, I'll select my lunch folder, and once again, if you don't already have a folder, you can create a new one, but I'll select this one and then click on OK. That's now good for my new rule, so I'll click on OK. I now see a message letting me know that the rule has been successfully created. That's great. But right underneath that, I see this message letting me know that the rule is client only and it'll only run when Outlook is running. So why is that? We didn't get that for the last rule that we created. Well, here when I move the message, you'll see that we selected some different actions. For example, when I get this message, we show a new item alert window. Also, we play a sound that's only available on my computer. So for this rule to run, I need this Outlook open for it to work. So if I go on a trip and I open up Outlook on the web, this rule won't take effect. So if I want this rule to be able to run anytime, I would have to deselect some of these actions here and then I wouldn't see this message again. For now though, all of this looks good. I spend most of my time on this computer. So I'll check this box to run this rule now on all messages and then I'll click on OK. It looks like the rule just ran, and here I see my new mail alert telling me that I received an email about lunch, so this way I won't miss it. I'll click on close, and here if I click into lunch, here too I can see the lunch message. I'm thinking that Japan Honey Burger Place sounds good, so I'll let Diego know. We've now created two different rules, and next I want to show you how you can start managing some of your rules, and we'll take a look at that before we jump into some of the truly complex rules. Here, if I go up to the top ribbon, we can click on rules and then let's select manage rules and alerts. This opens up a screen where I can view all of my different rules. And so far I have two different rules here. And once again, I can see that the lunch rule is client only. So once again, I need Outlook open for that to run. And the reason why is I selected some actions that'll only work on this computer. Down below, I see my other rule with Patty Fernandez, and this is a server-based rule, meaning that it'll work regardless of where I am and regardless of whether I have Outlook open. Now that we understand the difference between client-only and server-based rules, let's take a look at how one of these rules is even structured. Here, I've selected the rule with Patty Fernandez, and down below, I can see the rule description, or basically, this is the text that tells me how the rule works. Right up at the top, I can see when this rule runs. It looks like anytime a new message arrives from Patty Fernandez. And this is what's referred to as the condition. Down below, once that condition is true, it'll move it to a folder called My Manager Patty. This is called the action. So once this condition is true, Outlook will take some action. And then down at the very bottom, it'll stop processing any more rules. So why is it important that it should stop processing any more rules? Well, let's say for example that maybe Patty, my manager, sends out an email about lunch. It would run through this rule and then it would move her email to the lunch folder. But if I didn't have stop processing at the bottom, it would jump into the next rule and then it would see that this rule is also true and it would take that lunch message from Patty and it would also put it in my manager Patty folder. So the order of your rules does make a difference. So I wanna stop processing here so I only end up with that email once and that it's in my lunch folder. Over here, I can move rules up and down depending on the order in which I want these rules to take effect. Within this view, I can also make modifications to my rules. Here, for example, I'll click on the rule again with Patty Fernandez. And let's say that maybe my manager changes. I still want a rule like this, but I want it to only take effect for the new person. Within the rule, I can click on any of this blue text down here to make tweaks. So here, for instance, I could click on Patty. And then here I can choose who my new manager is. I'll click on cancel for now because my manager hasn't changed. Also, up above, I can make tweaks by clicking on the change rule menu. When I click on this, 
Here I can see some of the most common changes that I might want to make. Here for instance, if it comes from Patty, well that's pretty high priority. So I'll select mark as high priority and here you see that it adds an additional action to my rule. Along with some of those preset options, I can go up to change rule and there's an option for edit rule settings. And when I click on this, this opens up every possible thing that I can configure with my rule. And in a moment, we'll get to this with another email message. So for now, I'll close out of this. Back within my inbox, next I want to show you how you can set up some advanced rules to give you full control over how you filter messages in your inbox. Right here I have an email newsletter from Nestor and he sends this out every single month to the entire company where he announces new cookie flavors that we're experimenting with. Now personally I think this newsletter is a little bit of a waste of time. He claims that they do user testing to land on all of these different flavors, but my suspicion is that he just goes purely based on gut. I mean seriously, peachy peach? Who wants to eat a peach flavored cookie? Now I don't have time to read these newsletters, so I'm just going to filter them out using rules. To set up an advanced rule, let's go up to the top ribbon, click on rules, and then go down to create rule. This opens up the same prompt that we saw earlier, but this time we're going to advance to the next stage and in the bottom right hand corner, let's click on advanced options. This now opens up the rule wizard and you're probably thinking to yourself right about now, why did I watch so much of this video? What did I do to deserve this? Now this list looks really long, but let's walk through it and let's make some sense of it. Right here, we can set the condition. So earlier when we looked at the rule, the condition is what needs to be true before it triggers some type of action. So here, for example, if I get an email from a specific individual or even from a distribution list, I could look for a specific subject. I could look for text within the body. And here, if I go down, I could even look for things like an attachment. So you can look through here and you'll likely find the condition that you're looking for. Now let's say that you want to apply some action to all messages coming into your inbox. You don't necessarily have to choose something here. In fact, you could leave these boxes blank. You could click on next and you can apply some action to every single message that comes to your inbox. Now I do want to select a condition, so I'll click on no here. Now once again, I want to filter out this newsletter from Nestor. So I'm going to select from Nestor Wilk and then I'll click on next. This opens up a prompt where I can decide what action I want to take if those conditions are met. So here, just like we did earlier, I can move it to a specific folder. I could also assign a category to it. I could delete the message and I'm really tempted to do that. Over here, I could forward the message to specific people or to a specific group. I could even reply with a specific message. Maybe I'll send a response to Nestor that says, did you actually do any user testing? I could even come in and I could flag the message, I could print the message, and I could select multiple of these options. For example, maybe I could flag the message and I could print the message. So you can stack multiple actions on top of one another. With this message, and you could probably tell from my inbox, I like keeping things clean. So right up here, I'm going to select delete this message. Down here, I'll click on next. Lastly, I can choose whether there are any exceptions and these exceptions are similar to what we saw earlier and there are lots of different options. For example, maybe it contains specific words, maybe it's marked as important. And there are lots of different options and it's worth looking through all of the different options that you have. Now, Nestor sometimes sends me legitimate emails. It's only the newsletters that I don't like. Here if I move the message over, you'll see that the newsletter is simply sent to Nestor and I'm not on the to line and I'm also not on the CC line. And right here I see an option that says except if my name is in the to or CC. So if Nestor sends me a message directly or maybe he copies me on the message, it'll still come through. This should only filter out his pointless newsletters. I'll select this option and then click on next. Over here, I can now give a name for this rule. I'll call this Nestor Wilkes Pointless Newsletters, and I can now run this rule on all of the messages already in my inbox. I definitely want to do that because that'll help clear things up. I could also turn this rule on, and here I can verify what the rule looks like. Next, I'll click on Finish. 
And look at that, my inbox is now looking really clean but I might have been a little bit aggressive with Nestor's message. Here, let me go back to rules and let's go back to manage rules and alerts. Within here, maybe I really should read Nestor's newsletters. I can come over and I can turn a rule off by checking this box. So this rule is still there, but it's no longer activated. Now, let's say I just wanted to get rid of a rule altogether. I could click on delete right up here and this will get rid of that rule. With all of my rules in place now, I spent a bit of time creating these rules. Now let's say that maybe I get a new PC or maybe my PC drops in the chocolate river and I have to get a new one. Right up here, I can click on options and I can export all of the rules that I took so much time to create and then I could import them onto my next computer. All right, well that's how you can set up rules in Outlook. With this new knowledge now, please do not set up a rule to automatically delete the Kevin Cookie Company newsletter. That's a very important email and you should make sure to read it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. To see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Also, if you wanna see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.